This tutorial requires a little bit of a setup. So I've got here an image of some text. You can use any image of text. You can create your own text images, of course, or use just text. So with this, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy it into a document. So select it, so select and select all, and you can see the marching ants around there, and edit and copy. Now go to another document, and I'm just gonna paste this in. Now I'm not gonna use the text ostensibly on top of it, it's not gonna be a layer. So I'm just gonna paste it in, Control V, Command V. But you can see as a layer, what I can do, I can add that on top, and I want it just resized, all those sorts of things, and I'm gonna use snapshots. Snapshots are the key thing, and you can find that in the View menu, and Studio, and down to Snapshot. So there's Snapshot, and with this, just filled the entire document, I'm gonna create a snapshot. So there's the first thing, just go over here, snapshot. Click plus there, and I'm gonna call it text. Just make the basic text. Click OK. Now I'm gonna resize this, I'm gonna rotate it, and I'm gonna fill the entire screen. So I'm just gonna, again, unfortunately snapshots and the undo brush doesn't have a rotation feature or scaling feature. I would love that feature. Unfortunately, because there isn't, you have to do it manually. And now I'm gonna snapshot this. So let's just create a few, so different angles, zoom in, zoom out. So again, click here, plus. And this time I'm gonna call it rotated. It's always best to call it something, otherwise you come back to it later, you don't know what it's called. So undo there, and I can maybe duplicate this hold down the alter option key. So create multiple copies. And you can, of course, resize it, just like that. And again, move that around. Again, rotate it, just rotate like that. And you can create a vast number of different. Now, this snapshot feature, well, what's it doing? It's just doing a snapshot of this, this image. Whatever's on the screen at this moment is snapshot. So again, just hold down the alter option key, duplicate, and so on. So you can build up all kinds of image. And again, I'm just gonna call it jumble. Jumble of text. So you got that. Now, what you can also do, maybe, oh, with that, I'm just gonna add adjustment, because I want some color into it as well. Now I know it's just got slight there. So let's just go and create some color. Go to layer menu, and new adjustment layer, and what you can do, you can go for maybe HSL, but gradient map, really cover. Now that applies this color toning to this image, just using this gradient. You can see the reds there, you can see the blue, and you can change it. You can use anything. You can select this and maybe change it to another color. Go like that. Very quickly, just change it like that. And again, close that. And you can then create a snapshot from this. Just go again up here, little plus, click there, and I'm gonna go with, so it called it purple. And, well, what I can do, I can go all the way back again, doesn't matter, it's, the snapshot is saved. So with that, you can always go back, right back to the start, go to filters, maybe go for blur, Gaussian blur, or motion blur, but a range of different things. So click apply, and again, snapshot. And this time I'm gonna call it blur. Click OK. And also if you want to, just simply use normal standard text. Just go over here. You've got frame text, frame text tool, or artistic text tool, perfectly reasonable as well. But it's easier, I think, to actually just bring in, take a photo, snapshot of a, just an old document you've got, maybe something you've written yourself, that's the key thing. Because the key thing to remember, of course, is always that, uh, is that you obviously need the rights to that image. And the document I was using is actually a public domain one from about 1700s. So I think it's fairly public domain. And again, with that, you can create this and then you just go to text and insert filler text. And you can see you've got that filler text there now. Now, obviously it's on top of this image. So when I save it, this snapshot is snapshot will save the photo as well as the text, but it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm just gonna, so I'm just gonna save that. So that's an initial build up for the text. Now, 
just remove it. Don't need it. I've got the snapshots now. I've got all the snapshots that I want to work with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to simply apply them. And how to apply them? Well, you need to go over here and there's this state down here, the side. You go to the history panel, you'll see exactly the same thing. Weirdly, it's on the other side. I wonder why. That's weird, isn't it? Put it on that side for the history, snapshots, it's on the other side. You think it'd be consistent, be on both, be on the same side. However, what you can do is you can at any point use for the undo, and this is the key thing for this whole tutorial. Sorry for all the setup. So if you you could just skip all that previous bit if you didn't need to know all the setup of how to do it. Well, you can skip it all to this point. With the undo brush selected, you can just see it here, undo brush. What you can do, apply whatever you've currently got here as a snapshot. And you can see there it's highlighted, just there, fill the text. So fill the text is highlighted means I can apply as a brush stroke that fill the text. Now I can also go for one of the others. You can just select any of them. So that was the text one, you've got rotated, scaled, all those sort of things, jumble, purple, and so on, as long as it's higher. Now, don't restore it. If you want to restore it, you can just do that, just click there, but what I'm doing is selecting here. That's not restoring it, it's just using it as a source of material. So this one rotates. So rotate, and you can see, as you hover over, you can see what and I'm obviously not crazy anything in my, but it shows you what's in the source, which is quite handy. So you can just simply add on top over there very quickly like that. Now, all of the functionality, all the standard functionality, their width, opacity, flow, all those can be used as normal, as normal brushes. So we've got here the size 420. You can also modify the brush as well. So click here, more. More is really useful. Now it's sort of tucked away, but more you can just change the size, change the dynamics, size jitter, flow jitter, scatter, how it's scattered, like that, whole range of different options. You don't have to, of course, you can also change hue jitter, though in some cases, of course, it's not gonna have any effect. So you might find when you change something, you apply it, it doesn't result in anything, but there's always those options, but you've got there to manipulate that. So now I'm just gonna increase the size a bit, and again, just apply it. So simply just, Apply, just go over the bright, just apply it like that. Change the opacity. Maybe you don't want it as extreme as that. Maybe you want it to be about 24. So it's just very subtle. So you might just want the text to be applied there. Or maybe text applied over here. And so on and so on. You can just apply it anywhere. It's a localized text effect. You can go here, jumble. So just click another one. And this time I'm just gonna increase the opacity, push it up a bit. And again, you can see then as you do that, just apply it around there. You can see that text all applied. There. And it can be anything. Obviously, I use that text image. Doesn't have to be. This is, I say, this is the source material. Don't have to use that. You could use anything else. You could apply effects to this beforehand and apply, modify it in all kinds of different ways. Rotate, purple. So this time, you can see the gain, the purple. This is the adjustment. Doesn't have to be, obviously, a gradient map. You could have used any of the other ones just to have nice color effects like this, which can be just added very quickly like that. Also, you've got here blur. So here, this one was the blurred text. So again, you can see now you've got that blurred text. It's not blurred of the image, it's blurred text. And you can always change your mind. So you've got, say this, you've got this image. You might decide, you know what? Let's just create a snapshot of this. So filters, blur, and Gaussian blur, or maybe motion blur. Doesn't matter, just one of them. Just apply that effect, and you can see you just create that. Click apply, and again, just save it. So face, motion, and you've got that stored away. And again, you can always use it. Undo, again, go over here, click there, and you can just bring that bit. If you just want that, just that little bit there, just bring that part of the image in with that sort of blurring effect if you want to do that. And then, of course, you can go here, fill the text. So you've got the fill the text as well. That was the text that I just created just using the, down here, frame text tool. And you can just add that. So you can paint on some text very quickly, as well as, of course, click there, paint that on. That blurring effect again, and so on, so on. You can create all kinds of different designs simply by just going over here, 
pliant jumble. However, what you've also got is you've got here blend modes. So you've got blend modes, so you can turn around and say, oh, well, I don't want just normal. I can use multiply. So let's just undo that. And again, just apply there. And this time you can see obviously the underlying image as well. But you can see now obviously it's obviously going to make it darker. So obviously every time I apply it, it gets, gets a bit darker. And you just do that. Or maybe go for color burn. And again, just apply it there even darker. And you can see the effect as it does that. Just creates all kinds of weird and wonderful text effects on the script. And of course, I'm using just a standard brush. So more there. I don't have to use that. I could just change sub brushes. I could tweak the brush in all kinds of ways. So you don't have to have just, just this standard, very blurry brush. You can create all kinds of different brush designs to use with this undo. And again, go there, you know, let's go for instead add. So instead I can add to it. And you can see the effect then just by doing that, just using blend modes, just run through the blend modes and see what top effect you want. And again, it can be used maybe with blur. See that one, just crease around the edge like that. Sometimes of course the ad makes it a bit too much. So maybe you might again go for difference, maybe increase that. So just increase the size, let's just push that up. And then you can see the effect then you can go for some text like that. Creates all kinds of abstract text design. But of course, you don't have to just go with this. You can maybe decide, you know what, let's just go for filters and blur and Gaussian blur. So blur it, obviously got the lovely design here already, but again, simply go over here, jumble. You can apply that on top of that to create all kinds of text effects as well. So you've got the original image, maybe go for filters, distort and deform. Distort the design. So just here, you can got deform, you've got these little handles, just these little things there and you can highlight it and then you can just drag. So you've got that imagery you just added using that brush, the undo brush. And so it doesn't need to be just thought of just as undo. It can be used for all kinds of visual effects. Click apply. And again, you can always capture this. You can think, oh, you know what? That's great. Look at that text. Absolutely brilliant. Exactly the same as before. Just go over here, snapshot. Go for deform. And you can just save it, give it a name. That's the key thing, because I know after a while I think, you know, what, what's that one? So again, you do that, you can always bring it back, restore everything to that, and again, go to deform, just down here, make certain that's selected, and then apply it. And again, you've got difference there. Ah, oh, if it doesn't work, and I quite often do this, I'm suddenly just applying it. The layer's not selected. This is a key thing, always, always, always. Is the key thing is that the background, that needs to be selected. If it's not, you'll be applying brush and nothing will change. Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen at all, except obviously a spinning wheel for some weird reason there. However, once you've got that, and again, you can see now what you can do, you can apply obviously that deformed effect on top of that with blending mode of difference. Or maybe go for one of the other ones. Go for, again, lighter color and so on. Just apply it over like that. And so you can just see then the text effects smeared over there and so on and so on. Whole range of different text effects can be added very quickly using this approach. And again, of course, at any point you think, you know what? I like this as well. Again, just save it as a snapshot. So face plus whatever, click OK. And then you can use that. So restore it again. And again, go down here and you can apply your brush stroke. And again, make certain you select the layer because if you don't, you suddenly find you're not working with it. And again, lighter color, you can apply the effect just then. And you can see the result of that. You just create all kinds of very unique designs, all nicely smeared over there. And again, you can always still combine with all the other ones like rotate there. You can see the rotate there just as the text there. And again, it's using lighter color for the blending. Of course, you've still got symmetry. You've got loads of other great features that you can use with this as well. And that's a quick run through. Sorry about the initial setup in terms of, it's one of those ones that you do need a little bit of setup if you want to create sort of a mix of different text effects. So you might want, and I've obviously just gone with one text source and I'll put this in the uh, description, but 
but you could have like hundreds of different photos with different text and things that you've created. Maybe text that you've scrunched up. I love sort of scrunching up text, maybe pouring water over text, blurring it, smudging it, creating all kinds of, ripping it up, tearing up some old text and so on, making a jumble of mess and then using that as a great source with, say, with an image, just adding that on top of an image, then go to filters, apply various effects, etc., color effects, and much, much more, and then combine it using this text brush. This undo feature, undo paint, is superb, can be used in countless ways. So really worth checking out. Undo, just down there. Hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.